The cache remake is here, and it looks lovely. The colours have been toned down a bit since the early previews and we're left with something that doesn't look too dissimilar to the environments we saw in Crisis 3, right down to the abandoned cars, the long grass and knobbly trees. It's a joy to explore, with improved light shafts giving the impression of a damp, thick atmosphere. Transparent, corrugated plastic that shadows can dance through. The texture work is incredible. You can say goodbye to repetition thanks to elaborate, blended surfaces that allow for gravel to give way to grass and grass to give way to concrete in a wonderfully seamless manner. Edges are concealed with gorgeously detailed foliage and props, and the textures are made to look more detailed than they really are thanks to a high-res, semi-transparent secondary layer. Say you're looking at wood. The detailed texture will be for wood grain. Metal has subtle scratches and wear, and individual grains of sand have been sprinkled across the more worn parts of the ground. Even parts of the map like Reactor 4 that don't appear to have changed have had almost every one of their textures redone. Puddles are reflective, foliage blows in the wind, and the whole map feels alive. It truly is testament to how far the Source engine can be pushed if you invest enough time and skill into developing for it. But of course, it isn't just about looking pretty. It needs to function in one of the most competitive games of all time. So despite the detail, edges remain simple, and the walls remain relatively flat. You won't find enemies hiding in bushes here, and the important sight lines have been given simple, light textures to make players easily stand out in front of them. The Forklifter A is an example of a problematic prop. Over Cash's lifespan, the shape of this vehicle has been changed several times, with the intention of making it as simple and as boxy as possible in the name of gameplay. The APC at A has finally been freed from its metal confines. Despite this, as a prop it behaves in a similar way but the top is more sloped and I wonder if this will lead to new sightlines for those who utilise it. And the billboard's purpose becomes apparent when you stand on top of the lights. The billboard will hide you from players approaching from the truck. The real test will be when thousands of players are unleashed upon the map, but the first impressions I had from it were positive and it has finally given this classic map its own unique feel, rather than to be just a generic warehouse experience with added radiation. So gameplay wise, what has changed? The biggest has to be the new window from CT to mid. The ladder is concealed by a bangable wall, and once you're on the platform you can sidestep across to get a sight line into middle. This will make it harder for terrorists to smoke CTs out of the mid zone, and gives them one more place that they have to check. From the terrorists entrances you can see just how easy it is to make out an enemy's outline in the window, and how the background has been deliberately left simple and bright. The window is more elaborate than you might first think. From my budget cash project, a Molotov was discovered that let terrorists grenade right into this spot from near their spawn. And I noticed that if you stand on this crate near CT spawn, then you can just about see through to the boost, which would be a very sneaky sightline indeed. The other big change is to A. CT's entrance has been widened and the warehouse taken away to allow for more grenades to be tossed between places. It will reward practice, as the posts and props around this area will let you bounce grenades off them in all manner of imaginative ways. This bit separating B from the T approaches can be wall banged with something as small as a pistol. I expect this to really catch people out at points. Again, done to raise the skill ceiling and to reward players for practicing the map. And if it's too OP then stuff can always be added to the bit in the middle to lessen the effect. There's also a barrel in this corner now for CTs to stand on for a good view over the box that they previously could only hide behind. Checkers has been opened up so you can throw grenades right over into middle now. And I guess there's a rather odd inclusion of these tyres near T-spawn, which you can hide in at the end of the round. Again, I'm hoping for many dank occurrences here. CT entrance also has a tyre, but it's not close to being as effective. The sunroom graphic has been swapped for a high detail sun model. No clip into it to initiate interstellar. And the windows leading to B now need to be shot out individually, before all four would shatter at the same time. I wonder if this will lead to any new strategies to enable or to counter certain grenade setups. There are a few new camping places in B, though I've already covered these too, and anybody familiar with Half-Life 2's doll will recognise the sound the bear in Squeaky makes when you hit it. And this platform in mid has been added to make the second skill jump across to boost a lot easier as well as providing more cover for people camped out in the corner below. And that's a brief look at the new cache. F and Pone's done his bit, now it's up to the players to test, to judge, and to hopefully enjoy this remake. If you'd like to see more, check out this video where I compare all three major versions of cache through the ages.